Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of MHQ's Foundation Podcast 101, where, as is customary, I'm joined by Kat Zagati. Good morning, Kat. Good morning, Anne. And today we will be talking about foundation from yet another angle, and this time is which regime is good for you? Uh, because there's not one. There's not two, there's three regimes available in the UE, and as we will see, they're all slightly different. Uh, each regime for its own purpose, to an extent. They have overlaps, that's what we will cover this morning. So Kat, uh, maybe step back a little bit and uh, tell us, since when have a foundation been available uh, in the UAE, and when these, these various regimes pop up? Sure. So a foundation regime was first introduced in the UAE back in 2017 by EDGM. And after that, the IFC and RAC ICC have also introduced their own regimes. So there are three foundation regimes one can choose from in the UAE. ADGM, which was introduced on the 16th of August, 2017, followed by the IFC on the 21st of March, 2018, and recently RAC ICC on the 15th of December last year. All right, so I, I, uh, I guess that since these are all foundation regime, that there is a number of similarities between uh, these regime. We are talking about the same type of vehicle, a foundation. Uh, the number of council members, for example, is identical in all three regimes. Uh, what I'm interested in, not necessarily the similarities, but it's the D similarities so the key differences. So let's look into these. What are some of the first uh, and per perhaps uh, more topical differences between these uh, regimes? Sure. So the first difference is that in the DIFC and RAC ICC, a company can be morphed into a foundation, whereas this is not possible in EDGM. So in this respect, the DIFC and RAC ICC have a flexibility advantage over EDGM. Another critical difference is that both the DIFC and RAC ICC regimes accept foundation to have purposes that are exclusively charitable, whereas this is not acceptable for an EDGM foundation. The third difference um, I want to highlight here is related to the council members of the foundation. While the DIFC and RAC ICC accept both council members to be corporate entities, the DGM requires that a, the foundation council is composed of at least one individual council member. Lastly, and considering we know that privacy is increasingly becoming a key factor when considering structures of any kind, I want to point out here as well that the foundation regimes also differ in terms of privacy and the information that is made public by the register. For instance, RAC ICC is the only register not open for public inspection, so only authorized persons will be able to have access to the information about the members of a RAC ICC foundation. A DGM, on the other hand, is a public register. However, the, the public information is limited to name and address of the foundation and the founder, foundation charter, and the foundation's registered agent only. The DIFC approach is very similar to a DGM when it comes to uh, public information, save for the name and address of the council members of the foundation, which is also a public information in the DIFC. So before we conclude this privacy topic, I wanted to note that despite the rules uh, set by the registers in terms of public information, the privacy element can still be met in any of the three regimes by using, for instance, a nominee founder or professionals as council members, as we discussed in our, in our previous uh, podcasts. So a lot of angle to uh, address the confidentiality privacy angle by playing both on the rules and the use of the rules, uh, if I follow yes. you. Yeah, very, yes, inter very interesting. Uh, so as you can see, uh, already a couple of very topical differences, uh, the, the, the morphing, super interesting you could migrate a company to the uae uh, change it into a foundation if you have a difc holding with a necessary office guess what you can morph it into a foundation tomorrow hold the same assets uh, below it and you do not need an office anymore so you can save yourself some cost in the process too uh, the charitable um, uh, 
uh, element is very topical uh, in that this has been historically very touchy in the, in the jurisdiction. So clearly this is an opening uh, by the registrar to a reality that a lot of regional families uh, have some sort of philanthropic element to uh, whatever they want to achieve. And it's not only, only about doing uh, money, but it's about organizing and monitoring and, and uh, uh, KPIing whatever they do on the charitable front. What I'm interested in talking uh, about now is perhaps the most key element is uh, the compatibility of foundation with uh, domestic assets. And uh, at heart, this is what we're doing. This is a consolidation, asset protection, uh, business continuity tool. So uh, it is paramount that this foundation, whichever you choose, is compatible with the type of assets you are considering, being a business, listed stocks, uh, portfolio in a bank, and real estate. So my question to you, are all regime uh, similar or is there differences there too? Okay, so the three regimes are also very similar when it comes to holding of access, uh, assets, for instance. Uh, the three types of foundations can hold shares in companies, cash, stocks, portfolios, and etc. These three types of foundations can also hold properties in the UAE and abroad. However, when it comes to UAE properties, one should consider where exactly these properties are located. Per current practice and the memorandums of understanding in place, the land departments across the UAE have different approaches when it comes to registering properties with foundations. And I'll give you examples. In Dubai, for instance, if you have a property in Dubai, a DIFC foundation will have to be chosen. Why? Because the Dubai Law Department is currently only accepting properties in Dubai being owned by a foundation if this foundation is registered with the DIFC. Same goes for properties in Abu Dhabi. An EDGM foundation must be chosen. And also for properties in Hazal Kaima, where a RAC ICC foundation will have to be the one selected. So having said that, we expect that over time, the land departments become more familiar with foundations and relax their practice. For instance, to start accepting foundations to own properties in different Emirates, which is exactly what they are doing now with companies. I see. So uh, very specific and you, you, you need to watch out uh, before you step in. You mentioned real estate. Uh, it's it's clearly the most defensive uh, area, but we also see that with companies. Uh, Jebel Ali, for example, only accepts the AFC Foundation. So it's a little bit of territorialism here, uh, favoring the same Emirate. And I think that's fair game. Lucky, uh, lucky enough, we can actually do all these three products in-house. Uh, so for us, it doesn't really matter. You didn't touch on uh, one aspect uh, where you should ask me, uh, what about price? What is, what is the difference about prices? So there's none. Uh, word on the street is, ah, oh, go to ADGM is cheaper, go to Russell Kama is cheaper. It's not. It's exactly the same price. It just depends on the firm you work with. Uh, the registration and fees with the IFC, ADGM, and uh, Russell Kama, uh, the annual renewal fee with these three registrars, by and large, are exactly the same. So this does not make a difference. The difference is whatever scope you agree with your provider and how much they will price you for the privilege. And uh, uh, typically a firm like us, we price exactly the same thing because the overhead is the same and there's no reason to, to charge a premium if you're in the DIFC as opposed to Russell Kema. It's just more of a choose Russell Kema for specific reasons. In our case here is if you are really, really focused on privacy, uh, as many people are, but you still want a credible uh, regime that can benefit uh, from uh, the IFC court in, in terms of uh, dispute, then it's a fantastic uh, offering, which I think the fact that it came after uh, and now allowed Russell Kema to actually choose his spot and it has a very valid card to play uh, in this battle uh, of for foundation supremacy in the Middle East. If you are interested in Dubai real estate, clearly uh, DIFC Foundation is a must for you. And uh, there is uh, an element of competition between uh, ADGM and the IFC in terms of who has uh, the best regime. We didn't talk about uh, ESOP. We didn't talk about the availability to, to creating uh, certificates, uh, which are all elements that the DFC currently has and ADGM does not yet. But uh, 
perhaps it's something that they will consider uh, going forward. We would expect uh, some sort of leveling of the field because clearly some of these features are pluses uh, that could be possible in uh, uh, one of these uh, registrar. Say the, the fact that uh, an ADGM SPV today cannot morph to a foundation uh, is surprising. Uh, to say the least, and we would expect this to change uh, going forward just to give entrepreneurs more flexibility. A lot of people took advantage of ADGM for its uh, very innovative ADGM SPV regime and now are considering actually shifting uh, to the DIFC because they are unable to morph. So that would be a loss for the registrar, so expect that to change. So this is all you need to know. Whatever your assets, there is a solution, there is a foundation regime that will work for you. You just need to analyze your needs properly, analyze what the assets are, and at the time, check the latest practice. Uh, not everyone is exactly up to its game on that. Uh, we try to be, uh, and we'll be able to advise you if you want to dig deeper into one of these three regime. Kath, this was uh, very uh, eye-opening. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll Thank see you. you next week for another session where we'll discuss differences in similarities of consolidating assets from one's name into a company and into a foundation. Until then, very good week and good eat break. Thank you. Bye-bye.